Good morning, everyone. Welcome to worship. I invite everyone to wave at everybody else. Welcome. It's so good to see familiar faces and new faces. We're glad that this can be a place of solace and hope for people near and far. My name is Debbie Norton, and I am honored to serve as lay worship weaver this morning, along with our tech people, Sean Scally and Bailey Reed, who are working behind the scenes for us. Today is a very special service that happens once a year when we celebrate the passage from youth to young adulthood with our bridging ceremony. I will now read you the words of welcome. Whoever you are, whomever you love, however you express your identity, whatever your situation in life, whatever your experience of the holy, as you come seeking love, your presence here is a gift. Whether you are filled with sadness, overflowing with joy, needing to be alone with yourself, or eager to engage with others, all who welcome all are welcome here. I will now say the words of the chalice lighting. We gather this hour as people of faith with joys and sorrows, gifts and needs. We light this beacon of hope, sign of our quest for truth and meaning in celebration of the life we share together. I will now light my chalice, and I invite you to light the chalice you have at home. Go forth, because we are always going forth from somewhere. Going from our homes, our childhoods, going from our cities and countries, going from innocence to experience, to enlightenment, going into mystery and questions, going into the desert, getting to the other side. Go forth, leave behind the comfort and community of one place, head into the anxiety and loneliness of another. Carry with you the love and laughter of this place and let it light your way carry with you the wisdom you learned and the good memories. May they give you strength for your journey. And when you have been away long enough, far enough, done what you'd set off to do, been there so long that place too starts to feel like home. Come back. Come back to the one universal everywhere and every when and every one inclusive home. This beloved community of all creation that you can never really leave. These are words from Rick Hoyt, which are published in Becoming, a spiritual guide for navigating adulthood, edited by Kayla Parker, which has become a source of solace and comfort for finding all sorts of spirituality while at college, away from home. This book has so many collections of stories, prayers, chalice lightings, and hymns that connect to the different events, emerging adults, 18 to 24 year olds who have just recently bridged are experiencing. This poem, Beyond Borders, closely connects to bridging and has been a favorite of mine for a while. Hoyt says to go forth because we are always going forth from somewhere. It's what we are here today to celebrate. The ceremony of bridging is a marking of leaving behind the comfort and community of one place to head into the anxiety and loneliness of another. As Hoyt says, to bridge from youth to young adulthood is to leave behind the comfort and consistency of your YRUU community where your voice was always heard and you were a mentor to many, to take your seat in the larger congregation. 
this new identity that a bridger holds can sometimes be one of anxiety, one of loneliness. An in-between identity where you are no longer a youth, but you're not as old as many of the adults in your congregation. Bridging brings not only the loss of the youth community you have known for your entire life, but it also often comes with a new location. And for me, that new location was only a little ways down the road to UVA, but it was definitely a brand new community. For a while, these new people were strange and unknown, but it gradually became my new beloved community. Through the different organizations I was a part of here, my heart was filled with love. At the end of my first year in March, pre-corona, the people and places in my life at UVA were no longer new, no longer unfamiliar. And even over time, as Hoyt wrote, that place too started to feel like home. Originally, for this service, I was going to talk about the ways I have found a similarity between communicating after bridging and then communicating with the people I love during quarantine. However, when rereading this poem in preparation for this service, simply dissecting it through a bridging lens didn't seem specific enough, sufficient enough for this weekend at this moment in time. It was far too simple and didn't address the most pressing issue I would be carrying on my heart into church with me. Not addressing the Black Lives Matter protests that are currently being held across the country, demanding justice for the recent murders of George Floyd, Breonna Taylor, and all of those who have come before them who have been killed by the hands of police officers would be negligent and ignoring what many others are bringing in with them to church. This is a faith of people who show up in times of injustice. We recognize and value the inherent worth and dignity of all individuals. So when the ask to show up is called, we do. We even have organizations to help model how to faithfully show up. The UU College for Social Justice is a learning group that inspires spiritually grounded action for justice through acts of service and experiences. Side with Love is an interfaith public advocacy, advocacy campaign that has shown up for LGBTQ plus equity, immigrant justice, and racial equality. UU The Vote, launched this year, has a mission to educate communities and mobilize the voter base for a 2020 election that will inspire change, that will create change. We are a people that have a commitment to do whatever we are able to do in order to show up for issues of social justice. The president of the UUA, Reverend Susan Frederick Gray, once famously said, this is no time for a casual faith or a casual commitment to your values, your community, your congregation, your soul, and your faith. It is our faithful duty to show up for Black lives. We, as Americans and as Unitarian Universalists, have to be an anti-racist people who are actively participating in dismantling systems of white supremacy. Now, I certainly don't have all, I may not even have most of the answers of how to become an anti-racist person, but I will listen and be accountable for when I am called out. And because I don't have all the answers, I should not be the one giving this message. I'm a white young woman who, when speaking from my own lived experience, draws on a life of privilege. And yet this conversation must be had at this moment in time on this Bridging Sunday. In what better context than in a faithful one? 
where we bring our sacredness and our love to the table. Unitarian Universalists show up for social justice, yet we are not by any means a perfect people. The UUA and its covenanting congregations have done a great deal of hurt and harm to the black and brown members and organizations supporting black and brown people in our faith. When in 2017, the hiring practices of the UUA were labeled as racist and being based in cultures of white supremacy, religious educators Aisha Hauser, Penny Wiley, and Christina Rivera put their minds together. These three educators worked to build a curriculum so that Unitarian Universalist congregations around the country would be aware of the cultures of white supremacy within their own faith. This teaching and the, and the conversations that have followed it have given even the youngest members of our Unitarian Universalist community the beginnings of an anti-racist education. When rereading that poem by Rick Hoyt, I was struck with how similarly it followed the process of learning how to be actively anti-racist. At this moment in time, there is a huge call for all non-Black people to go forth from a complicit state of silence to speaking up and vocalizing their solidarity with the Black community. For some, this experience of speaking out will be one of leaving behind innocence. It is a privilege to be completely unaware of the inequity that surrounds you because it means that the inequality doesn't affect you. Becoming informed about this movement may be disheartening for some, but to be anti-racist is to commit yourself again and again to learning about and speaking up in solidarity with Black lives. And I will say that again, to be anti-racist is to commit yourself again and again to learning about and speaking up in solidarity with Black lives. The solitary act of calling out acts of injustice, of donating, of having those difficult discussions must become a habit done every time oppression and injustice strike. Doing this time after time may become tiring. Continuously speaking out and standing up against racist acts and white supremacy in your community will be one that is taxing. It will. But staying informed and aware of the world around you is so important. Through this time, it is important to check back in with your faith and carry with you the love and laughter of this place and let it light your way. And Tuesday night, the UUA hosted a virtual vigil for people to do just that through song, prayer, and stories led by the Black clergy and lay leaders of our denomination, a regenerative process began. While this service was one of worship, it was also one of motivation. The Reverend Carlton Elliott Smith, a Southern regional leader for the UUA, asked us to think about what faith we want to be. This was a time for participants in that worship to think about how they wanted their future actions to be remembered. The way that members and congregants of the UUA will act will be the way this faith is shaped. As I have said, we are a faith that shows up for social injustice. We are also one that has deeply hurt members of our community. Reverend Smith wanted us as individuals to think about the actions necessary to have a continued momentum in the fight for Black lives. Alandria Williams, co-moderator of the Unitarian Universalist Association, talked about how we must train up our people to go throw down with the movement. Drawing from a vast bank of Unitarian Universalist religious education, 
Alandria urged to bring back activist trainings that had been popular as their years as a youth, as those resources helped shape an entire generation of Unitarian Universalist activists. For us as a faith to raise youth and form adults to be actively anti-racist, the entire community must be on board. It is Alandria's wish that a bridger in our faith would have all the tools they would need to go out onto the streets and organize, to build movements of change and protest with the most marginalized voices. For the youth of our faith to have been brought up anti-racist so that they can begin their activism work with a mindset focused on change rather than first having to change their mindset. We are here to celebrate our ritual tradition of bridging from youth to young adulthood because change is a constant part of life. The steps that must be enacted towards dismantling white supremacy in America won't be changes where people can sit silently on the sidelines and watch. Heather Heyer, the young woman murdered on August 12th, 2017 in Charlottesville, wrote in her last Facebook post, if you aren't outraged, then you aren't paying attention. Beloveds, as we continue to feel that outrage from paying attention to the world around us, use it as motivation, fight so that we can have the one universal everywhere and every one and every one inclusive home as Hoyt talked about. Fight like your life depends on it. Amen and blessed be. Thank you for that, Julia. Good morning, everyone. My name is Ellie Ransom. As someone who bridged a year ago and has been watching the ceremony since I was a child, I clearly remember how beautiful and momentous of an occasion the bridging ceremony is. In this video that I made, let's take a look on some past bridging ceremonies and the people who are a part of them. The transition from a youth to a young adult can be a sad, scary, fun, loving, happy, crazy time. The bridging ceremony encapsulates all of that, and this is not our first bridging ceremony, nor will it be our last. Shown in these photos, we have seen 28 of our own young UUs bridge just in the last five years, and have had many more before them. Having the support of your community and knowing they're watching over you, figuratively and literally while you walk through their arms, it is such a special time. Bridging is part of the heritage of this congregation and Unitarian Universalism all over the world. Bridging ceremonies occur locally and nationally, and some of our members have even bridged at General Assembly. Julia Landis, Thomas Jefferson Memorial Church, Unitarian Universalist in Charlottesville, Virginia. While we can't physically be together for this year's ceremony, the love and pride we feel this morning is the same as always.
Good morning. My name is Leah Derlins Jones, and I serve as our congregation's director of faith development. It is my joy to lead our bridging ceremony this morning. We give thanks this day for all the amazing high school youth who are part of our church family. Our annual bridging ceremony is the time when we as a congregation recognize our youth who have reached the important milestone of graduation from high school. Along with their families, we join in celebrating the hard work, effort, accomplishments, and sacrifices that is taken to reach this day. This morning, we have the honor and privilege of recognizing high school graduate Ethan Hartung. Ethan, even though we are not able to be with you and your family and friends in our beautiful sanctuary, we are thankful to have the opportunity to acknowledge this milestone and celebrate with you today. I invite all of us to enjoy a slideshow created with love by Ethan's family while I share a little bit with all of you about Ethan. Ethan Nash Hartung, son of Amy Nash and Matt Hartung, is a graduate of Ravana High School. A highlight of high school for him was playing JV and varsity soccer his entire high school career. And he was sad to not have the opportunity to play during the spring semester of his senior year due to the pandemic. Ethan has played travel soccer every year since the age of four. Truly, soccer is one of Ethan's favorite activities. One of his best memories from growing up in our church is making food in the church kitchen and serving it for Pacham, the overnight shelter we host twice a year for homeless people in our larger community. There are many adults at church who have helped Ethan feel connected to our faith community over the years and helped in his growing up, including his YRUU youth group leaders, Amy, Pam, Greg, and Jen, his Appalachian Service Project Advisors, especially Beth and Larry, and his coming of age challenge mentor, Kathy Polly. Ethan also thanks all of his RE teachers over the years and remembers time with me in children's worship as a young child. Learning about other religions and visiting their places of worship as a teen in the neighboring faith class and learning about social justice at every age, but especially in YRUU, have made it in a big impact on Ethan's life and how he lives his values. Because of all these people and these experiences and others that we don't have time to name today, the advice or wisdom that Ethan offers is try to make a lot of friends because friends make everything a lot more enjoyable. Ethan will be attending Virginia Commonwealth University starting this fall. Ethan, it is an honor to symbolically mark your transition from youth to young adulthood with this bridging ceremony as you now make the crossing from high school and the safety and security of home to young adulthood and all the opportunities that await you in the wider world. You have been a part of this congregation since your birth. You participated in children's worship, our elementary religious education classes, neighboring faiths, our whole lives, our coming of age class challenge, and then why are you you, our senior high youth group. It has been a gift to know you and a privilege to be part of your life and to watch you grow up. Ethan, you stand before us today, having grown beyond the child you once were. With each new day, you learn more about yourself, your world, your loyalties, and your devotions. Today, we celebrate all that you are and all that you have accomplished. 
we anticipate with joy and enthusiasm the possibilities awaiting you. Each one of us grows into our fullness with the help, love, and care of those who nurture us. No one because becomes his or her best self or wisest self without the guidance of mentors, teachers, parents, and friends along the way. We each owe a debt of gratitude to those who have supported our becoming. It is a blessing to be a mentor, teacher, parent, and friend. For all these opportunities, for all these connections, we are truly grateful. Ethan, as you bridge from a youth to a young adult today, we celebrate the new perspectives you bring, and we stand with you as you face the uncertainties of a future you cannot know. Even as you take today your new place among us, we recognize that you are in the midst of pursuing a new path waiting before you. As a congregation, we bless you now, and we promise you our support. Here is a blessing for you. We recognize this day as a time of new beginnings. You are leaving the security of the past and embracing an unknown future rich with possibility. Your congregation honors you at this time of change and transformation. We make this pledge with joy to persevere with you in our free faith with all the blessings and responsibilities it brings. May you always know that you have a place among us. Ethan, when you completed this church's coming of age program, Challenge, you were gifted with a handmade chalice by Patty Wallens. We hope you continue to enjoy this very special gift from Patty throughout your life. We also have gifts that we will get to you that we want to give you as we mark this occasion. They are your own portable UU altar in a box. In your UU altar to go box, you will find a small chalice created by Circe Strauss. May it remind you of your own inner light and may the light of its flame continue to light your way. There is also a small altar cloth and an inspirational reading. We've also included a special rock with a labyrinth on it to help you find your way and follow your own path through the curves of your life. And to aid you in your journey, we have a small directional compass to help you find your own true north. We hope that these gifts, rich with symbolism, will be easy for you to take with you no matter where your path leads and that they will serve as reminders of this congregation's love and affection for you wherever you may be. As you know, it is our custom in our child dedication ceremonies to give each child a rose from which the thorns have been drawn. We will give you a rose too. But this time, the thorns have not been drawn. As a young adult, we hope you will grasp life with all its difficulties and sadness, along with all its joys and beauty. We know, we believe, you are ready to face life's sharp edges because we know you have the inner and the outer resources not only to survive, but also to thrive. Ethan, on behalf of UU Young Adults Everywhere, and particularly here at TJMC UU, we greet you and welcome you to the community of young adults, which is now yours. Wherever your life's path next take you, may you find sustaining connections with peers, both within and beyond Unitarian Universalism. May you discover a community of friendship that helps you continue to grow as a person of faith and also supports you in living your values every day. 
I welcome you to young adulthood. Ethan, may life greet you with all its richness and bounty, and may you know that you are never alone. Our wish and prayer for you is that you find joy and meaning at every turn. Ethan, go out into the world, explore, use your unique gifts, allow yourself to change, to grow, to keep learning, and to give more than you receive. And carry in your heart the, the knowledge that no matter what you experience or what you face or what challenges come your way, you have a welcoming and loving home here with us always. Alleluia, amen, and blessed be. Let us move into a time of prayer and meditation with the words, another prayer from Becoming. Useful anger. A good anger swallowed coats the blood to the slime by Marge Pearson. But what is to be done with this anger that dare not be swallowed? Should it be diluted with denial, cooled with indifference? Should it be sweetened with good intentions or softened with lies? Should it be spewed out red hot over searing tongues, scorching the guilty and innocent alike? What's to be done with it? This anger that dare not be swallowed. Don't dilute it. Deny it or cool it. Don't sweeten it or soften it. But pause for a moment. Could you hold it before your eyes? Examine it with your heart and your mind. Could you hold it? Then touch it to your belly, the place where your soul rests. Could you let it enter there, knowing that it is a part of you that needs to be treated kindly, that needs to be listened to, that needs to be honored, for it has the power to save you, to save us all. Now we'll have our benediction. Go out into the world in peace. Have courage. Hold on to what is good. Return to no person evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted. Support the weak. Help the suffering. And honor all persons. It is finished in beauty. Return often to let your cup be refill refilled. The chalice is extinguished, but the flame of hope, truth, and love goes with us.